<laughs> Hi, this is Dr. Kim Bird, writer, and we're with Science and Humanity, and I'm here today with Desiree Dubois. Hello. Hello. How are you? <laughs> this is fun. This, this is great. Is, this, this is great. Fun. What are you up to today? Well, we're going to talk about some business. So business is a science, or there's a science to business, but Desiree is using her business in the humanitarian way. And so I wanted you to explain to everyone how you're using your, you have amazing skills in business, there's no doubt about it. And maybe tell our viewers your past because it's so huge. We could be here all day just talking <laughs> about what you have accomplished in your life. But yeah, yeah tell us briefly, a little bit about Briefly, I've just been an entrepreneur since I was 12. So it's always been my life, my passion. And as an adult, my passion has always been towards business and entrepreneurs because I know the journey. I know the pain and the pleasure of that journey. So I can relate to them. And I found a lot of needed skills in the needed community. So we created different organizations and companies like one empowered women where we support women starting, fixing and building their business. And then I also have a background in multimedia marketing and real estate. So um, we had a community and the community for women in business. I started it initially thinking I'm gonna get women involved in real estate. So all my investors were men at that time. And I thought, well, I'll get the women involved because they have the money, they have the credit, they have the work to do it. And then I, when I started it, I realized that they needed other business skills, than just skills, basic skills for how to start a business, how to register it, how to formulate it, how to manage it, how to build a team, how to utilize the things that are available. And a lot of them that are none of are available now, and it increasingly you know, has changed over the years, but the basics are the same, just different modalities. And uh, we started doing that. And while we had this community that we built up of women, entrepreneurs and professionals, from people that are you know, under, making under six figures to people that are making over seven figures, um, we built a great community and we wanted to do, we wanted to travel. And my thing is I wanted to travel. And we thought while we were traveling, let's do good. And we would go to different countries and different areas. Um, we went to Brazil twice, you know, realizing that they had a, we know that it was, um, the first time we went is because we were brought to our attention that young girls can't go to school without a uniform. So constantly they're at home all day with men that are um, sexually abusing them consistently. And there's no thing, nothing that a parent can do because it's no place for them to take them. So we raised money and funds to be able to get the ladies the uniforms. So when we went over there to take it over there, we realized that they didn't have skills, a lot of skill sets. Um, and to get the good jobs in areas like that, most of them are hospitality. So we were able to build a, went to the orphanage and build a computer labs and get some companies from there to donate the computers and also get into the programming and we taught classes to them. So they'd be able to take online classes on you know, different things, different skill sets that are qualifying them for jobs that were available for them. And then we also found out what their passions were. One young lady wanted to open up, she was doing nails. So we, showed her how to create that as a business, the nail business, and get other people to work for her as well. Somebody else with a hair, somebody else, um, whatever it was, we showed them how to formulate it into, this is what you do, this is how much you, this is how you get a price sheet together, this is how much you charge, this is how much you pay your person, this is how much you save, and this, that mindset, because if you've ever done it, it's like a puzzle. It's, I haven't done a lot of calculating problems. I don't know, I would know where to start. And that's the so, science. Yes, it, it is. Yeah, you don't know where to start. So things like that we were able to do and um, make a difference. And then we went back again. We realized that we went back again another year and we were even more prepared than we were able to accomplish that much more because we brought more ladies with us and each lady was able to bring clothes and food and not necessarily food, but clothes and personal items, a lot of things that a lot of ladies could not afford for themselves, um, and things for the children, and things for the orphanage, and then we were able to do it. So then after that, uh, so we was, our goal was to do it every year. And then after that was the uh, hurricane in Haiti, the mm -hmm. hurricane in Haiti. Yeah. And so we went there, and it was all ladies and one man, one empowered man. It was supposed to be our muscle, but <laughs> I was telling you the other day, it wasn't really much muscle, but he was good to have, and he enjoyed it he, to this day. It's a memory, you know, you really hold on to, and what we did there was help me build a children's hospital. The only lady, you know, had, a, it was actually American that went over there to start this children's hospital, and it was totally devastated, and so we helped build it and get supplies, and actually paint and clean and just all that, and we were helping with that, and bring supplies, we took wheelchairs and medical supplies, and 
everything we could donate, we asked for a wish list. We had a mission worker working with us, and they gave us a wish list, and all the women, you know, for the most part, contributed money or contributed items. And the problem was is that a lot of our shipments didn't get through to the people. I think we know that after a while, things start getting sidetracked, but um, we had our skills and we helped there. And then we were supposed to go to Puerto Rico. No, no, Cuba. Cuba last year, we had planned to go to Cuba for the jazz festival. Because the thing is that we worked during the day, we had fun at night. Um, but that was right when we were having the big fires and four out of our 20 people couldn't go because they're they lost property in the fires. In so, California. Yeah, right yeah, here in California. And so it's just, it's just, and that we were doing, we were visit five women businesses that had different businesses. One of them had a, the, um, the car um, refurbishing and one of them had yeah. a store. Just different businesses. So it would be curious to us. How do you find her? Well, through the different people. This was a young lady that works that she does, uh, she still does Cuba travel. She's from Cuba. Mm -hmm. And so she's been doing Cuba travel even for all these years. And people, uh, some of our girls have actually went on um, tour trip, so she organized it. She found the women. She found the so women. you have a contact in that country, and then they go to their contacts, and they figure out five or six women that would benefit from right. your knowledge base and your mm -hmm. scientific skills of teaching them to yeah do business mm -hmm. models. Mm -hmm. Do you do business plans and things like that, or is that yeah. just over the top? Very very basic. Very basic. Okay. We may like write down on a piece of paper, you know, again, like how much do you want to make, you know, okay. and then we'll say it's going to take. You know, ten people a week to make that amount. And now, what you're gonna make? You know, how much do you provide for supplies? And how much does profit? Like, how much do you pay for supplies? How much do you pay for your person? And how much do you pay for your overhead? This is really basic, but some people just don't think about those things. You know? well, Americans don't think about those things. They're like, I want to open a restaurant, yeah. and they just do it. And it's like, you, know, you have to project how many people you need for right. this amount of dollars. Your, your food, your otherwise you'll be out of business. Yeah, and that's unfortunate by a lot of business. Well, so you know the extent of how the extent of your experience to be how detailed your plan is. Like once you do it quite a few times, it kind of comes naturally like anything else. But initially, it's just not having those because sometimes people don't factor in and get a, a vacancy factor. They don't factor in a pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> pandemic. <laughs> Somehow they got missed. <laughs> it wasn't in the business plan. <laughs> Yeah, so things happen, you know, so they don't plan for that. And or how much they need to save. How much they need to save. Do you need their business viable. Yeah. And you know how much they need to, yeah, how much you need to get to start it, you know, how much it costs, you know, they say, okay, it's going to cost. I see that in the real estate agency all over, like, you know, I can buy this house for, you know, 500000 it's going to take me, it's worth 800000 take me $100,000 to start the business. Like, well, no, you haven't factored in, you know, holding costs and utilities and garbage and all that good stuff while you're holding it. And then, you know, if you run into a problem, when you're fixing it. So this is it's business, but mm -hmm. it's um it's all for the most part easy enough to show a person to do that. You know, and are they, they accepting? Make, are they yeah, yeah they're, they're starting, they're starting for help. They are so they really like the knowledge. Yeah, they do. And they use it and they use it. And we actually the ladies were most of the ladies sponsored a a, a lady there. Mm -hmm. Most of our ladies sponsored someone there so they kept in touch with them. And I know that for years afterwards, the ladies would send pictures of a one shop with a bigger shop and a bigger shop. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's how they get started. Somebody has to go. Yeah. yeah somebody has to go. And this well, and maybe you have to mentor them to grow. Like they've grown to a certain point. And now what do they do? Right, right. Like, yeah, how do you scale that? Well, that's again, the ladies that are sponsoring them. They have to stay as much as they can do that. So, how often do they? I don't have not followed up with the ones that in the Brazil, because that was literally probably about 10 yeah. years ago in Haiti. I don't remember if it was a while ago. Maybe um, once a month, month. Would be I think once a month. I think We're as they grow, available. I think oh, they're available. They always yeah. are available. Every now and again, I'll get an email because you know I organize it. But, um, you know that this is pictures of mm -hmm. their success, the pictures of their daughter that we helped you know get back to school, and now she's graduating oh, nice. school. One of them will get a job in one of the hotels and send a picture of her, of her you know first paycheck yeah. from school. That little child, that little girl, would not be in school, right? If it wasn't for her being able to get a uniform, and it was like seventy dollars a year, it was like such a small amount. But the reality was they couldn't afford that. Mm -hmm. And again, they wouldn't be able to go to school. So just getting them educated. And I've always been, you know, to say an advocate for women power. Women, I just always believe that it's best the child that has her own. You know, even if you don't need to make the money, it's always good to know how we can make money, whether it's well, male or female. I talk to my sons as well, but it's. Are they educated? Like, do that when you go there? Do they already have an education? 
but they're no, still they're receptive. Right. They can still right. grasp the concepts. Right. They right. still get it. Right. And yeah, they have the interpretation. You know, yeah. Others, but they would not have to, you know, for right. Portuguese. And yeah. So forth. But, but they are. I think what happens is that sometimes they do betrayal. They re derailed by not having a support system. Uh, maybe their husbands think, you know, that's just, you know, that doesn't, you know, right. that's funny stuff or that's not so serious. They don't really want to spend money, especially if they're making money right away. Mm -hmm. They don't grasp the fact that they, it takes time to build a business and it takes time to make money. So many times it just So they don't have a role model of a woman that's doing that. that. Yeah. So that, that's why I think community is so important. Mm -hmm. I believe that everybody should be a part of some kind of community, some kind of women's organization, community in some way, shape, or form. You do a lot of communities. To do a lot Mention of communities. Mention that, plug your communities <laughs> that you do, because just to um, show what you can do out there. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah I'm the founder and the CEO of Empowered Woman. And then also of homework, but I'm also on the board of directors at, uh, gosh, uh, both, uh, Women's RAN, Women's Real Estate Network. We meet monthly and we talk about real estate, how to invest in real estate, which is really powerful for women to learn the ways that even like you hear about passive income and passive revenue. That's, yeah, if you don't know, you don't know. Yeah. Um, so that's real estate. And I also support real estate investment goddesses. I'm on their board and they specialize in multi residentials primarily. Um, board of Enterprising Women, and that's women that are seven figures and above, and they're either scaling businesses or getting you know, giving back, but they're still, you know, or exiting their business. Usually at that point, they're trying to think, how could I build the cell? They're building the cell. So then I also am on the board of um, uh, NABO, National Association of Business Women's Owners. So different boards, different women's groups and organizations, and it's helpful because you are able to get a bird's eye view of how organizations are structured, how they're maintained, how the memberships are grown, how the financials, how you know, how they're just how they are you know, revenue is generated from them. And it's again, it's a great way for me to be able to give back, and I enjoy it. And your mastermind? And your masterminds. We do masterminds. Uh, we have a mastermind called Let's Talk Success, where we once a month bring in a woman who's built a seven-figure business, and they come in and mentor those that have that are working towards that they share their stories the challenges the victories and the secrets to success and it's really helpful to hear someone that's been there and done that i believe that there's a different perspective someone that wants to do it and that or you know goes to school and learn how to do it but someone that actually has done it because you really get some you really get some nuggets that way and so, they also give advice to everyone in the room yeah. everyone tells that expert what's going on in their life mm -hmm. and she Helps them out. Yes. And yes. gives them some ideas. Yes. Yeah. Of how she overcame that particular problem. Because I think, yeah, to, to that point is that no matter what business you're in, there's certain things that are just, again, across the board. You know, it's the same. Nice. Team, exactly. There's certain things. Employees. Know, exactly. Payroll. Business or, loans. Exactly. All that stuff is all yeah. the same. There's a lot of things that you can speak to. Personalities. Personalities. And then that many times that's what makes or break businesses. It's, you know, that support system. Again, mm -hmm. going back to that. And they are willing to give back, and that's what you find so beautiful is that the mentor, that mentor, they're willing to give back, they're willing to share. And in a way, you're being, you're, uh, we were talking about humanity towards other countries and, le you know, the less fortunate or the, however you want to say that, you know, third, third world. Mm -hmm. yeah. But um, you're really helping Americans. I mean, yes. you're helping a yes. lot of women in California. Yes. Or because you're in California, but um, now that, this all of these live communities are not able to meet. You're doing a lot of it online, yes. so you could actually bring in other states and have yes. more of a national mm -hmm. level, bringing these masterminds to more of a national level. Although I've been to your mastermind meeting, and it's really fun to get together with other women and um, you lay out the spread, the food, <laughs> the you know the wine, and then everybody just hangs out and gets to know each other. But then you learn and grow. Mm -hmm. What that's a beautiful experience. But I, I foresee you doing more, like well, bringing we, in a lot of other people. Yeah, we do, and we, we used to do it. And then there's nothing like that personal touch, but it can be done. Like even last night, we did a uh, wine and dine. So I invited people in the community to online. Do it. Yeah, online. And so the deal. <laughs> you all drink your wine online. Yeah, we drink, drink our <laughs> wine. We talked about our recipes. <laughs> We talked about different types of wines. We talked about, you know, they were recommending this kind of wine, that kind yeah. of wine, and so forth. And then we talked about what we were eating, what we prepared for meal and dinner and things of that type. And then we had a chance to catch up. And what we were doing to stay active is good to cope because yeah. we have a community where it's called walking and so forth. 
So that was one. And this morning we did a coffee and conversation. <laughs> so we had someone that was leading the conversation. She spoke about the new tax laws as a result of this and the extension of the deadlines and the payments that were due and so forth. And then we had a break, and our, our break was coffee, uh, coffee but we were drinking. You know, so but, I mean, that's a really, that's what girls talking the golden. And the, the golden, golden milk. The golden milk. She's talking about it's the golden like a turmeric mm -hmm. and almond milk. So he's it's really good. good. Yeah. So it's just so they, he's learned different things in that point. And then we took the last part about you know the last half of it was um, you know you creating some online uh, revenue. And then we're also working on a project with STEM, which is you know science, technology, engineering, and math for teenage girls that are underserved. That's a big high school. Yeah. We were supposed to be there last weekend. Last no, weekend, we were supposed, yeah, supposed to go to Florida last weekend live with it, and now we're going to postpone it until October, where, you know, supporting those ladies, those girls here, like you said, in America that don't have access to what type of jobs are available for people that pursue those curriculums, that pursue those studies, mm -hmm. you know, and then there's so many unique things that ladies are doing with those background, that background, and for some of us, again, it's totally, you know, I'm more of a creative, so I have no gene for any of that so to me it's like fascinating what they do and how they do it and it's always fascinating too that how young they are a lot of them are really young a lot of them are really beautiful because i just made pictures of them in marriage and so forth yeah and it's just wonderful beautiful tough ladies that are yeah. really doing things so from the young teenagers to wherever you are there's uh, importance of being part of the community is more important than being mentored and taking training constantly you're learning every day and just now we have to do it differently but we'll be we have a couple of things we have planned. If people are interested in, in learning all of these wonderful groups, how do they reach out and do that? They contact me. Okay. <laughs> how do they contact you? They contact me. The name of our uh, our primary company's homework is H O M W O R K, no E. And that's where you can live where you work, work where you live, anywhere in the world. And that's how I had the pleasure of meeting Yes. Them, through, the, through homework. Um, and then for to contact us directly, we directed us desperately at homework.com. So it's D E S I R E E at H O M W O R K dot com. And this homework dot com. Or if just Google me, Desiree Dubois, you'll find me somewhere. And you are a plethora of information. <laughs> it sounds like obviously, right? I enjoy well, it. What are the it. outcomes that you see from these groups? How do you see people change? Women. So it's not even, okay, so it starts like within. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, the women get self esteem and boost their self esteem because they know that you can take care of yourself and support yourself, or you have a skill set that you excel in. You know, boost your self esteem, which enables you to walk away from situations that may not be good for you. But many times, people stay in situations, um, whether it's financial or relationship wise, or that's not good for them because they don't really have an option. So, initially, it gives you that strength and knowledge to be able to do that. This is there's another way. way. Yes, there's another way. I mean, you can do it. You know, you can do it. You see other people doing it. You just don't identify yourself with them because you know how to do it. And then that that trans... you think they're lucky or something. Yeah, they're smart. Like or that. They just yeah, they're smart. They're smart. Lucky, or they just they knew somebody. Or natural. Or like, yeah. I look at a natural artist. I can't go. Oh, right. Yeah, but it's also right. natural. <laughs> I'm in there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I got turned off my blinky thing. All the days he said they would draw blinky and they would sit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they would send me back in the back of a magazine well, they draw exactly, pictures exactly, and grab it. Exactly. And then they had sending mine back. I couldn't even, even get one of the artists. Yeah, I did. I thought it was cool. I thought there was anyone who could do that, right? But no, so it is a task. So once you know them and you can do something, yeah. that is self that self esteem is huge. And then that translates to your children. So whoever you're leading up, they see that difference. They see that you're strong and powerful. They feel that. They feel the strength that now they can do anything. Then it goes out into your community. You know, then you uh, you know, affect your world because if you have a, a workplace and they feel it, so it's just like it's almost it's contagious. Mm -hmm. You know, self-esteem or just knowledge is, is contagious, and it just makes a difference. It makes a difference all the way around. So I've had. I'll tell you one quick story. Um, there was a young lady that had called me, because I call and say, you know, they're having a bad day, they're, and, and she was crying because she just wasn't doing it. Nothing was working, and there's a period of time that nothing works. Everything you touch, everything you touch turns to gold. Everything you touch just turns to to <laughs> yeah. dirt. Yeah, okay. days like that. Yeah, technology, yeah. especially yeah. like every piece of technology yeah, you touch you. is not yeah, working. Home you. Home you. Home you. Home you. <laughs> and anyway, so she responds. I said to her, I said, listen, go on to our website, and we have a lot of. Um, motivational videos and then that website if you want you know that's an empowered woman 
A-N-E-M-P-O-W-E-R-E-D-W-O-M-A-N.com. And Empower Woman, we have a lot of videos there of women sharing their stories and telling stories we don't normally get. And so, yeah, I said, just go watch them and you'll, you'll know, boost yourself up. But then a couple of hours or later, she calls me. She's really bawling at this time. And they went, oh my gosh, what did I send her? What did she see? <laughs> you know, what did she see? Okay, she watched the video. <laughs> she watched the video. Well, which one did she see that was yeah. She was really a wreck. I said, what happened? I said, you know, what, what happened? She said, one of the first videos that she watched was one that she had did earlier. Oh my God. And it was about her talking about her story. And, it was, and she forgot how wonderful she was. Oh. She forgot how all the things that she had to conquer. She forgot. <laughs> She forgot, and just the fact that she it reminded her just totally broke her down even more. Wow. So we forget, you know, how wonderful we are, but I believe that everyone listens to our women and they forget it. And we all have gifts that we just need the opportunity to shine. We do forget. We focus so much on the negative that we're trying to fix or correct or make better that we forget all this that we've done in the past that that worked. Yeah, well, look how amazing you are. I mean, you're, you're, the edu- you're the educator. You're the student. You know, all <laughs> and the, I don't feel that way most of the time. All the initials you have after your name, I don't even know what they mean. Much less, you know. People have to tell me. They're like, you did this and that. And it's like, oh my, you're yeah, right. Yeah. I, yeah, yeah, I don't think of it at yeah, all. we're all going through that. We're all amazing. We just have to we're all just trying to get through the day. Right. And, and then we kind of let our situation, our current situation, dictate who we are mm-hmm. and who we are not. And we just have to not do that. We have to let nothing or no one. And the people that. around you makes a difference. Every group that you have around you each day makes a difference. If you've got negative people around you at that particular time, you're going, you you're believe going everything they say, yeah. you're going with them. Yeah. That's why and I said so important to have a community. Constantly. Mm-hmm. Like you can't even let them go by the wayside. Like it sounds like this gal did. She kind mm-hmm. of got off, we, we all get off track where, mm-hmm. you know, we start working with our family and going in this direction. And then, I mean, off, off track as far as letting our community of empowered women fall by the wayside. We have to stay in contact with them and show up to the groups and in the events. Yeah. And the events. Yeah. Like, why? Why not? And then we forget how much fun it is to be around mm-hmm. all those groups of women. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You're doing such an amazing job. Well, thank, thank you. You've done the good work. Thank I don't you. know how you do it. <laughs> I love it. I've been here watching her do it. And I, she's like, Kim, it's time for this or that. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> Okay, another party. What party is it? What's this one called? What are they gonna do to me? <laughs> you did. It was like you, you were kind of like, oh my goodness, if this hadn't come up, you would have been like, we had event after event after event when you came in. So you would be like, okay, what are they doing now? I could have been a superwoman by now. Exactly. Dang. Exactly. All those seminars you were doing, and all, and everything, and everything. And that's the great thing is when you live in the executive. She does executive housing, and I'm renting one of her executive room suites. It's definitely a suite. You're in it. Um, we're in my executive suite right now. And this is just a corner of it, that, of about 1,500 square foot of my suite. But um, yeah, it's like every Friday night, there's an event in the house and, and or a retreat going on. And not only is that, you always invite me. You're like, come out of your room and let's have a, join the party. And you're like, okay. And the great thing is you don't have to drive home. You just can't. I and mean, you can excuse yourself and be like, I'm gonna go to bed now. Bye bye. <laughs> and you just, you know, scamper You're out. Going, going. But you never want to because everybody is so great. And then the the retreats, the people, the people that come are so interesting yeah. because they're searchers. Yeah. They're yeah. looking. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. They're looking for groups and they have so much to give. Each mm-hmm. one of them is mm-hmm. like a powerhouse. Yeah. I just sit and listen to them. I let them talk. <laughs> and I pick their brain because mm-hmm. they're all so amazing. When I come here to hear your lecture or one of your retreats or someone else's retreat. So mm-hmm. I highly recommend the executive housing, which is the homework, right? Yes, homework. Okay, is that solve all? Homework is where you can live where you work, where people live anywhere in the world. Yeah, and I can even host retreats here if I want mm-hmm. to. I never have to leave yeah. my home. Yeah. And guess what? The home is in McMansionville it is a really nice home. <laughs> this is like, this is a luxury. Like well, there's it's no great. way I could afford to live in a home like that. I wouldn't want, there's too much home here for one person yeah. to take care of. So it's just, it's just a win-win. I get to enjoy the luxury of this home, the gourmet kitchen, the, the suite, the five-piece bathroom, the washer and dryer, the garage, you know, I get to enjoy all the amenities of being in a mansion without having the maintenance of it. 
Yeah. I thank you so much for being here today. Welcome. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Oh, thank you. We got the hug. That's good. Bye-bye. <laughs>